Thank you, Irving. Now we call Gary. That's a hard act to follow, but I'll do my best. Jerry Heller was a visionary. He was my cousin, my mentor, my boss, my friend, and I'm going to miss him tremendously. The majority of the highlights of my life and my livelihood were provided by Jerry Heller. Uh, my name is Gary Ballin. I'm Jerry's first cousin. My mom and his dad were brother and sister, and we grew up in Shaker Heights and then moved to Cleveland Heights, Ohio. And Jerry was 12 years older than me, and so I don't remember a lot of the early days, but when I was a guitar-playing teenager, I knew that he was the agent for some of my favorite groups in the world. The Guess Who, The Grassroots, Spandells, Lee Michaels, Credence, and, and many, many more. In the summer of 69, my parents sent me to California for a couple of weeks to hang out with Jerry and Ken and Barbara. I was going into my senior year of high school. I was a football player. I was a jock, real short hair, you know, and uh, that vacation just blew my mind. It changed my life. Uh, he took me to the Whiskey A Go-Go, and I sat next to Eric Burden of the Animals, you know, which one of my favorite bands, and we watched the early Flying Burrito Brothers at, at the Whiskey. After that trip, I realized that I wanted to come back to California someday and be like my cousin. In the following years, Jerry acted as my guide, my mentor in the music business. He took interest in the band that I was interested in. And he flew out to Columbus, Ohio, where I had some friends of mine in a band called McGuffey Lane. They were kind of like the Midwest Ohio Eagles. They, they were great, and he loved the band. So we flew out and came out and met with the band, and I was like a hero, you know, bringing a big-time agent out to see these friends of mine. A couple weeks later, he flew one of the singers out to California, took him to all the major labels, he wined and dined him, and it, 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 he really cared about these guys. Um, when I finally moved to Los Angeles in 1978 uh, to run Big Ed Productions, a rehearsal studio in Northridge, he started bringing me clients. And one of the clients was Corey Wells. And Corey uh, was working on a solo album at the time. And then one day Corey said, hey, I got a surprise for you. And the next day, all the Three Dog Night walked in. <clears throat> and they were, they were reforming. And I got to mix sound and hang out with Three Dog Night, which again, was one of my favorite bands growing up. Jerry guided me along the way, him being my cousin, he helped me in so many ways with lawyers and contracts and strategy, and mostly his never-ending contacts. He was always there for me. Sometime in the mid-80s, Jerry started to come over my house and he would bring me these cassettes of this new group he was working with called NWA. And he told me about this little guy from the hood named Easy E that wanted Jerry to help him start a record company. Well, I listened to Straight Outta Compton and F the Police and Boys in the Hood and Gangster Gangster and I said, man, you are insane. <laughs> Nobody's, you can't say F the Police. You know, they're never going to play this music on the radio. You're not going to be able to do tours. He said, no, no, you're wrong, Gary. And very calmly he said, this is going to be the biggest band in the world. This is the rap, the Rolling Stones of rap, and this is going to take over rock and roll. And I saw the whole thing happen. Jerry the Visionary. Sometime in 1988, Jerry asked me to meet with uh, Easy e Dr. Dre, MC Ren, DJ Yella, Ice Cube, and all the bodyguards that came along with him at a deli. And he said, Gary, I want you to meet with these guys and help them design 
a stage and sound and lights for the upcoming tour that I'm putting together. I had 10 years of touring before that, so I kind of knew how to do all that stuff. So Easy sat down and took a napkin and took a marker, and he wrote exactly how he wanted the stage. He said, I want police tape in the front, I want garbage cans with fire coming out, I want a chain link fence, fence behind me with graffiti, I want the chalk lines of dead bodies on the ground, and I want two big platforms on each side for the go-go girls he took on the road with him. That was another life-changing moment for me, compliments to Jerry Heller. I ended up working for Jerry from that moment until Easy died in 1995. When the Straight Outta Compton movie came out, Jerry was deeply hurt by how he was incorrectly portrayed. It was obvious to us that were there that during those times that Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and Tamika rewrote history at Jerry's expense. Jerry was a powerhouse in the music industry, but as part of his family, I got to see a very different side of him. At family gatherings, he would always pick up the tab or bring too much food to eat. He was devoted to his parents, his aunts and his uncles, and had an especially strong bond with my mom. After my dad died and my mom was dying of cancer, Jerry called my mom every day and gave her a Gelson's card so she could always eat whatever she wanted. But he also made it a point not to put anything I would eat on that card. <laughs> he was also devoted to shelter animals. He loved his dogs like they were children, as you can see, and always took in rescues. He would visit the shelters just to feed the dogs, provide them with company, and he always donated to the shelters. Over the years, Jerry would come and see me perform, and when I would announce to the, the audience who he was, people would freak out. There's so much I can say about Jerry Heller. Since Jerry's passing, I received countless phone calls and emails and text messages from people all over the country that he helped out in so many ways. And the people that he stayed in contact with for 30 or 40 years, he would talk to them every week. This wasn't supposed to happen this soon. He was ready to sign a contract for a movie based on his life, and he had the lawsuit to clear his name from the Straight Outta Compton movie. He loved his new house, his family, had plenty of friends, made amends. Jerry had health issues, but he wasn't ready to die. I guess God had other plans. Ironically, today is Easy es birthday. I'm sure they're looking down at us and having a big, big laugh at how much attention Jerry is getting. <laughs> Jerry loved attention. The last time I saw Jerry was when we dropped off a Magic Johnson bobblehead that we got at the Dodgers game a couple of weeks ago. I talked to him last week to see if he wanted me to drop off some Congan water that he loved to drink, but he said he was all stocked up. My girlfriend Mary Lou and I were watching the Dodgers game Monday night when I was writing the eulogy. It was a fifth inning, the Dodgers were winning eight zip, and they hit five home runs. And all we could think about was how happy Jerry would, would, would have been. He loved watching the Dodgers, and him, he and Mary Lou really bonded over their mutual love for our first place team. Jerry was my cousin, my mentor, my boss, my friend and I will miss him very much. He played a powerful role in my life, and looking out at the crowd, there are so many people here to honor him today. What role did he play in your life? Thank you.
the street in my sixth floor, jocking the bitches, slapping the hoes. Went to the park to get the scoop, knuckleheads out there, cold shooting some hoops. Car pulls up, who can it be? A fresh El Camino rolling kilo G. He rolled down the window when he started to say, It's all about making that GTA. Cause the boys in the hood are always hard. Come talking to trash, we'll pull your car. No, nothing in life but to be legit. Don't quote me, boy, cause I ain't said shit. You are my sunshine. Never should have been let out the penitentiary. Ice Cube would like to say, I'm a crazy motherfucker from around the way. Since it was you, I smoked weed out. Now I'm the motherfucker that you dream about. Taking the life for two, that's what the hell I do. Don't like how I'm living well. Fuck you, this is a game. And I admit it, my man Jerry fuck you up in a minute with a right, left, right, left, your toothless. And they say, God damn, we ruthless. Everywhere we go, it's a damn. We don't care. We don't just say no. Too busy saying yeah. About drinking straight out the eight bottle. Do I look like a motherfucking role model to a kid looking up to me? Life ain't nothing but bitches and money. Cause I'm a type of brother that's built to last. Fuck with me, I put my foot in your ass. I don't give a fuck cause I'll keep bailing. Yo, what the fuck are they yelling? You are my sunshine. Because he changed my life. We'll talk. We love you, Gerald. Don't take my son. Gangster Tracer. Straight out of Compton. Crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. From a gang called With Attitude. When I'm called off, I got a sawed off. Squeeze the trigger and bond it off. Hauled off. You too, boy. You can fuck with me. The police are going to have to come and get me off your ass. That's how I'm going out for the punk motherfuckers at your like gumbo going off on a motherfucker like that with a gad that's pointed at your ass so give it up smooth ain't no telling when i'm down for it Jack he's a murder rapper keep get dancing i got a crime record like charles manson ak-47 is a tool don't make back the motherfucker someone else me and you go tone no making knocking brothers out the box daily yo weekly monthly and yearly till the dumb motherfuckers see clearly that i'm with a capital CPT, boy, you can't fuck with me. So when you're in your neighborhood, you better duck. Kill a clown, crazy as fuck. As I leave, believe I'm stumped. But when it comes back, boy, you are my sunshine. My Jerry.